Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. This is me doing an extra question on January 20th of 2023. I'm trying to, you know, finish these farms. I have like 800 left or something. I don't know, I can't do math. Math is hard. So yeah, so let's kind of do one. It's Friday night. So, you know, that means I have time, I guess, because I don't have life. But uh, okay, so today's farm is 2291, maximum profit from trading stock. So this is a premium question. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord so that Larry is not so sad on a Friday. <laughs> I'm just kidding, by the way. I mean, well, you should still hit the like button, but I am just joking a little bit. Uh, anyway, let's take a look at what this farm is. So, you know, it's one that I haven't done before, and it is a premium question, which is nice because that's what I'm paying for, I think. Uh, okay, so you're given two zero indexed integer arrays of the same length, present and future, where present sub i is the current price of the i stock and future sub i is the price of the i stock a year in the future. You can, may buy each stock at most once. You're also given an integer budget representing the amount of money you currently have. We turn the max, maximum amount of profit you can make. Maybe I, can I talk like a stock book? What is, how does a stock book taste, uh, uh, talk like? Huh. I'm just thinking an auction year in my head, so maybe that's not quite right. Okay, so it seems like my, if my understanding is correct, then it means that basically, um, given these are the current stock prices and you know the future stock prices, you're trying to buy some subset of present such that, if, well, one is that it fits into your budget and that you can make the most profit. This is actually um, deceptively difficult, I believe. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. It's only a medium. So sometimes knowing the difficulty kind of... Um, you know, maybe cheats a little bit of your, your you know, because I think one thing that I do get into a bad habit of, and some people as well, is kind of be like, oh, it's a easy, it's a hard, so it must be, you know. So then, like, instead of just, like, looking at a problem and trying to analyze it as best as you can. Anyway, okay, because my first initial thought is that it's going to be, you know, some sort of sorting problem of, okay, you know, we greedily choose the present and, and, um, we greedily choose the present uh, that gives us the most profit. You know, maybe there's some other uh, metrics to greedy on, but it's something like that, right? Like, okay, there's present, there's future. That's, you know, like either maximize the delta between the future and the present and then kind of sort by that or something like that. But of course, you, you because of this budget concept, um, this budget, um, you can imagine that there is, uh, and I don't know if I have a counter case, but it's just, some of it, this is experience and me trying to figure out, well, um, just thinking about, or maybe having uh, PTSD about past problems, um, but but the, 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 the constraint part of it, um, if, if you have done enough problems, or at least, I don't know, and I don't know if this is right, like I said, because I haven't done this problem yet. Um, but my, my problem is that it, it reminds me a little bit of knapsack, right? And if you think about knapsack, type thing of like trying to squeeze things in well um well it doesn't always um uh 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 you know like greedy is not good enough it's a short answer maybe i'm saying it right uh and of course this is a this is me actually before looking at the constraints everything that you see on the screen is what i've seen so i haven't even looked at the constraints yet my my theory is that um in that case we would have a dp on budget on a knapsacky thing. Let's take a look. Um, okay, so N is a thousand, and then the budget is a thousand. So with a budget of a thousand and about a thousand objects, um, you definitely can do. Um, yeah, and each of these is a hundred. So maybe that part doesn't matter as much, except for keeping bounds. Um, so yeah, this is going to be knapsack in that. Uh, 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 or I know that knapsack will work. Uh, the one thing about Py, uh, lead code and Python is that a million operations is kind of, you know, but uh, it should be okay. So the idea here is, and we can write this knapsack in a couple of ways. Um, and yeah, and the idea here is just ask yourself, okay, um, the two dimensions, right? Two states dimension. One is how many stocks you've used. Um, and for each stock, you independently are able to ask, well, um, have I used it or not, right? And because you because they're independent in that way, um, you can just kind of keep an index of all the, you know, like for every stock, do I use it? Ha have I used it to buy at this price, right? And that's basically the idea. Usually I would probably, 
But yeah, but this is going to be the knapsack problem. And having a, a good under, understanding of the nax, uh, knapsack problem and the, the DP solution, which gives us a pseudo, did I spell pseudo right? Pseudo, 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 uh, what's it called? Pseudo polynomial time algorithm, right? Um, so yeah, so th that's basically the idea um, about um, this part. That's going to be the attack for this problem. And honestly, you know, if you've seen me doing, doing these kind of dynamic program problems enough, um, if you haven't, that's fine. Um, but I usually explain in a top-down kind of way, and I am going to do that very quickly, but I, I'm not going to fill out all the code because because um, because I think for this case, it'll be too slow just because Python need code. Um, my, I have my doubts. I mean, maybe we could play around with it. But the idea behind the state is, let's say, maybe uh, max profit, and then the, the states would have um, index, and then maybe the current budget, right? And then the, the idea is, given that we only care about the last, I don't know, n minus index, so or we, we already factored in the first index stocks with the with this budget, how much can we make, right? And then the idea is that, I mean, it, it's basically the only two, um, uh, two things to do here, right? One is buy the stock and the other is not buy the stock. If you buy the stock, budget goes down. If you don't buy the stock, budget goes up or stays the same. Um, there are a couple of ways you can do this. And I actually like doing it bottoms up. But now that I think about it, um, it's, it's going to be a little tight, to be honest. A thousand square for iteration. But let's try it. I, I take it back. Let's try it and then see what, what, what we can do, right? So, okay. Oops. So n is equal to length of present, um, yeah, I guess it's the same. And then basically, if index is equal to n, then we're done, then we return budget, because that's just how much money we have left. So we should return it, I think. That's the base case. That's it. Otherwise, uh, we just take the max of max profit of index plus 1. Uh, uh, maybe I'll write it out a little bit different. Ooh, oops. Maybe I'll write it out a little bit differently. Uh, so max profit um, buying the stock, right, is equal to, so how much money do you get from buying the stock, right? It's going to be future minus uh, present uh, of index. Oops. So that's that's our profit, right? Um, yeah, that's our profit plus max profit of index plus one because well whatever and then budget minus present of index because we that's how much money we spend right and then max profit not buying stock well this one's easier you just it's just max profit index plus one same budget because nothing changed and then we return the max of these two things and that's pretty much it really um i think for knapsack i actually usually prefer it bottoms up um just because it is very i don't know a lot maybe i'll just practice enough so maybe that's not really a whatever, but I know that this is going to maybe time out, but I just want to see if it at least gives us an answer. Huh, did I misunderstood this? I hope I did not misunderstood this. Uh, let's see. Do we not care about the budget? It may be that I misread this a little bit. Oh, I guess it's max number of profit. So, okay, so I was wrong about that in the base case. It's, it's kind of a weird and unintuitive thing maybe because why would you not consider how much money you spend, right? But, uh, okay. But it's still wrong, but it's at least one step closer in my mind. Uh, okay. Hmm. Did I, make, did I make any issues? Oh, I'm just being dumb. Because basically, uh, if present of index... I, I'm like, I, I took a look at the budget, but I didn't say, oh, only if we have enough money. So this may go into negative. Uh, so that's a little bit silly. Uh, ooh. Uh, it, otherwise, it's just zero, right? We don't take the max of that. Okay, so now that that's good. Uh, a couple of silly mistakes aside, uh, and I hope that it makes sense to things I correct because I don't think I corrected major things. The the big one is just that I forgot. We have to check that we have the budget to actually buy the stock. Duh, Larry. <laughs> but yeah. Um, okay, right. So that's good. That's fine. Uh, yeah, and it looks good. But if you have a thousand elements, this is going to be 
insane amount and it's going to tell you but but you know I, I like running it just so that i can kind of see whether this at least uh passed the input and apparently we didn't right we didn't for a little while and we um you know uh, we have to make some bug fixes so you know it's fine um cool and then now what are we doing right now as we said, this is going to be too slow. You can even maybe put a test case just for fun uh, that will show this. I'll just kind of copy this case a few times and it should be okay. Uh, and I don't even know. Eh, maybe a couple more times. All right, and I'll just copy this into the future. Again, this should be zero anyway, but it was still time out. It doesn't really matter, right? Oh, wow. How does this not time out? Hmm. Oh, because the budget is too small. So it's not doing all the, all the, I don't know if that's true, but we'll see. Anyway, my, my point is to demonstrate that it should time out. Uh, and it looks like it is going to time out. And then the idea behind the, the DP part of it, of it, of course, it's going to be that, okay, well, um, a core part of memorization and DP and caching in general is that for each input, it's deterministic that for, for the same input, you get the same output every time. This is not true for every function or method per se, just to be clear. Um, but, you know, it is the case for here, right? Uh, for given these two inputs and also these two inputs or three inputs. But, you know, given these inputs, uh, uh, these are invariant and these inputs were given the same input you'll always give you the same output which makes sense right nothing changed nothing can change everything you know in advance so then let's look ahead right index will go from zero to n and budget will go from zero to n as well or zero to a thousand i suppose it's not really n uh yeah but where n is equal to a thousand right so then you go okay well if we get the same input for every output then that's that's cash it right that's create a thing so that's basically the idea and then now we can think, you know, cache is equal to none for uh, times, uh, let's see, inside, something like that. And then has cache oops, is what I like to do. Um, and I drew a force. And then basically here we just go if, oops, if we have cache for index budget we return the cache. Otherwise, we put this into cache. And we mark it as, well, we have the cache. Now he's got the cache. And then now it should be hopefully better, yeah. Right, so let's give it a submit. If it times out, it's just because the code is silly. We'll see if it does or not. Uh, there's a there's a kind of a reason why too, and it does take a long time for that reason. Um, the reason is because actually uh, this allocates way too much memory uh, every for every test case, um, because depending on the the input, it may actually be a very sparse array um, or matrix in this case. Meaning that, for example, if budget is a thousand, but most of those states are not visible, then you're still allocating memory for it, which kind of adds up over time. Um, and stuff like that, which is why, um, which is why I usually do this bottoms up, though, um, because then you can actually eliminate a dimension. Uh, I'm not gonna go over that that much today, and there's some opt other optimizations that you can make. But uh, but yeah, I'm not gonna go over that today. But that's what I'm gonna have. It is Friday night. I'm gonna try to make the best of the rest of the night. So that's all I have. Stay good. Stay healthy. To good mental health. I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.